contractors for exploration of Kusilian resources. I warmly welcome all of you to visit the HTC Research Institute of Kiosti Munji. We are very pleased to be able to host this workshop under the theme of the method standardization of the macrofauna taxonomy in the Clarion Crypto Fracture Zone. The location of this place is a quite remote, as you recognized yesterday, but it is very beautiful and the right ocean front. It is a good place for you all to work hard. Kyost, as one of the pioneer investors, has been embarked in the exploration of manganese nodules for almost 25 years since late 1980s. On the other hand, we have expanded these applications gradually to SMS deposit and manganese crosses. On the other hand, we have made an effort to innovate underwater mining and uh, refining technologies. As of today, Korea scheduled licensed areas for manganese nodal in the Clarion Crypto Zone and SMS deposit located in EEZ, so Tonga and Fiji, and the International Waters in the Indian Ocean. A couple of years ago, we developed a pilot scale robotic mining machine called Mineral, which is the world's first robotic mining machine. Last year, we successfully conducted an operation test on the seabed at the depth of 1,380 meters. Further, we are planning to conduct a sea trial test of the full version mining system, including lifting and correcting by 2015. Today, world interest in Marine mineral resources is arising. Due to such a rising interest and the market demand, the applications for international standard authorities' exploration license are increasing notably. For example, until 2010, only eight mining licensed areas were approved by international standard authority, but by next year, this number will grow up to 23. Besides, Environmental issues on seabed mining are concerned. I believe uh, convening this workshop is very timely and necessary. We will do our best to help make this workshop successful. I wish you all to share your experience and expertise to achieve the goal of this workshop. Lastly, but not the least, I do hope all of you stay here comfortably and bring many good memories back Again, I'd like to express my deepest appreciation to Mr. Dutton, ISA Secretariat, and the Minister of Oceans and Fisheries of the Korean government for their support which made this workshop possible. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Uh, next, to uh, welcome his speech from the, our government office, uh, Mr. Hyunteki is a director of Marine Development Division and also belongs to the Ministry of Ocean and Fisheries in Korea. Please welcome. Good morning to you, Secretary General, Mr. Dunton, and good morning to all the delegations. It's very nice to meet you all. I am Hyun Tae Kim, the Director of Marine Development Division of the Ministry of Ocean and Fisheries of the Government of Korea. It's my great honor and pleasure to have Mr. Odin Chun, the esteemed Secretary General of the International Civil Authority, as one of the contractors for polymetallic audience and the mass vessel size on the sea floor. Korea government gladly takes up the chance to host this workshop today. Many contracts for the exploration for polymetallic nodules at the Pacific are drawing near to the exploration in 2016. It means that the world of underwater mining is on the verge of advancement from its exploration phase to the exploitation stage. Since 2012, ISA has been striving to establish the International Code for Exploitation. Accordingly, the living figure in the scene is being changed from international government to non-governmental corporations like the Canada-based company, Lotus Mineral. Contrary to the notable progress on the development side, the environmental aspect is facing rising concerns against the development in current impact. Such concern will not be dissolved until we come up with the variable solutions for the minimum.
optimization of environmental impact and the conservation of biodiversity. And especially so in cities on well approval of contractors mining fields are congested. Joint efforts required an across the border coordination of contractors, international organizations and scientific communities. To this effect, these workshops are very significant in terms that all concerned experts are following their findings and insights on the microfauna, the potentially major scapegoat that we have to seek res rescue from their coming underwater development. Since the early 1990s, when the industrial use of deep sea minerals were adopted as a goal, the Korean government has invested in the research exploration and the technical development. Consequently, the Ministry of Oceans and Fisheries obtained their contract to prove polymetallic knowledge in, in Sisi Zone in 2002 and another for sea flow sulfide minerals in the Indian Ocean in June this year. As a newly elected member of the Council Group B, the Ministry is looking forward to the realization of the practical use of the long-awaited resources. The practical use will benefit the world economy as well as the resource-deficient countries. I give you my word that the Korean government will continue to support the various programs both for the resource development and environmental conservation. I would like to take this opportunity to express my sincere appreciation to ISA Secretariat and the Kiosk staff for their services to prepare this workshop. Last but not least, I firmly believe that the active exchange of your experiences and knowledge during this week will turn out to be a move forward for the underwater environment management plan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Looks like uh, we get it really quick. Uh, it is very important because sometimes the opening address is too long, you already tired before starting the workshop, right? <laughs> and next, uh, uh, Mr. Otonte uh, Secretary General from ISA, uh, he will give uh, in our address for the screen. Good morning, everyone. Distinguished representatives of the government of Korea, uh, distinguished representatives as well of Kios, experts who are assisting the ISA in this work, representatives of contractors. It's a pleasure to see all of you here, um, and I hope that we have a very good week where we move forward with our work in an effort to ensure that we do protect the biodiversity of the area from the effects of deep sea bed mining. Following the adoption of the regulations on prospecting and exploration for polymetallic nodules in the area, six entities entered into exploration contracts in 2001. These were the Ocean Metal Joint Organization OLI, USMO Geologia, the Government of the Republic of Korea then under the name Kori, China Ocean Mineral Resources Research and Development Association, COBRA, Deep Ocean Mineral Resources Development Company Limited, DORAD of Japan, and the Institute Francais de Recherche pour l'Exploitation de la Mer Inframer of France. Later on, the government of India signed a contract in 2002, and in 2006, the Institute for Geosciences and Natural Resources of Germany signed a contract as well. 
Nauru Ocean Resources signed a contract in 2011. Tonka Offshore Mining Limited signed in 2012. And UK Seabed Resources Limited signed a contract in 2013. To date, applications by the Cook Islands, UK Seabed Resources Limited, and Ocean Mineral Singapore Limited are pending for approval, thus adding to as many as 13 licenses awarded for exploration for polymetallic nodules. Under the regulations, an exploration contract is for a period of 15 years, and the plan of work is to be executed in three terms of five years each. Of the above mentioned contractors, six Six contracts will expire in 2016 and one in 2012. Each of our contractors is required to submit an annual report to the Secretariat covering its program of activities in the exploration area as disclosed in each of the five-year plans of work for their respective areas. The reports must contain sufficiently detailed information on exploration work during each calendar year, including the provision of baseline environmental data and to establish baselines against which to assess the likely effects of its program of activities under the plan of work for exploration on the marine environment and a program to monitor and report on such effects. In this regard, contractors are required to gather data on biological communities, taking samples of fauna representative of variability of habitats, bottom topography, depth, seabed and sediment characteristics, abundance of nodules, and the mineral resource being targeted. In addition, contractors are to collect data on the seafloor communities, specifically relating to megafauna, microfauna, myofauna, microfauna, demersal scavengers, and fauna associated directly with the resource, both in the exploration area and in areas that may be impacted by operations. Uh, for example, the operational and discharge balloons, and to report on the results on tests of proposed mining technologies and the results obtained from environmental monitoring programs, including observations, measurements, evaluations of environmental parameters, abiotic and biological. Through the course of its uh, life, starting as far back as 1998, the International Seabed Authority has convened various workshops to take a look at what the possible impacts of deep seabed mining would be. One of the things that has permeated each of those workshops has been the statement by scientists that of all of the items of the environment that would be impacted the most would be the fauna. Again, these uh, primarily are from the plumes that are expected to be generated from mining. Over the life of the authority as well, in almost all of the meetings, of the authorities' legal and technical commission. In the discussions about the environment, we have looked at a variety of ways of trying to deal with this problem. The legal and technical commission in this regard has proposed a number of recommendations for the guidance of contractors to ensure that the impact on the environment is kept at the minimum level. After a decade of annual reporting from contractors for polymetallic nodule resources, the need to provide guidelines for standardization of taxonomy reporting practices were detected. Following informal consultations that I held with exploration contractors for polymetallic nodules in January of 2012 in Jamaica, it was decided to organize a series of taxonomic exchange workshops on the megafauna, macrofauna, and myofauna in contract areas. The need for such workshops, bringing together 
contractors and experts for the different faunal groups became apparent to address potentially varying taxonomic standards and the differing taxonomic expertise available. Such needs were also in line with the international project in DEEP, which among other objectives aimed at providing large-scale synthesis of biogeography and biodiversity patterns in the deep sea, as well as fostering environmentally sustainable management of deep sea resources. The very first of these standardization workshops focused on the megafauna, a size component of the abyssal fauna. The megafauna is defined as organisms large enough to be determined on photographs, typically larger than one centimeter in size. Exploration of the abyssal region of the CCZ reveals that there is considerable biodiversity uh, at many scales. Most of this biodiversity remains undescribed. The reasons for this are many, but relate fundamentally to the great size of the region, difficulty in sampling at great depths far from land, and the discrepancy between the rate of discovery of new species and the availability of taxonomic expertise to describe them. I am very, very happy to see a few of the expert scientists that assisted the authority in this work. Um, I'm also happy to report that while the first set of annual reports um, following this workshop will only be available next year, already we find the results of that workshop to be reflected in some of the reports we receive from the contractors. I would like to draw everybody's attention to the objective of this workshop. Having started from the point of view that um, the items that would be greatly affected from deep sea bed mining would be the fauna associated with the polyptide nodules, I believe it's of great importance that we are all very, very clear on what the fauna are in particular in a region like the CCZ. Um, there are a variety of topics that could be addressed as part of the environment. Our biggest problem is that um, the contractors came into this process for the purposes of mining. Um, it's well understood that we have to do as much as we can to learn about the environment before any mining takes place. At the same time, however, it's important that we do try to isolate some of the major problem areas, address those, and place our legal and technical commission in a position to be able to take sound judgments, informed decisions based on our regulations. For example, in our regulations, it is stated that areas that are found to be particularly success, success, excuse me, success, susceptible, susceptible to um, the impact of mining, in particular on the fauna, will be disapproved from any mining. Um, it therefore is important that we have a very, very good idea across that CCZ of the fauna associated um, with the polymetallic nodule deposits. Each contractor gets 75,000 square kilometers of an exploration area. It is not expected that the entire 75,000 square kilometers will be mined. Indeed, at the workshop we held recently um, in Goa, where we were discussing um, standardization of the resources for the polymetallic nodules, it was pointed out that of the 75,000 square kilometers, as little as 250 square kilometers of area would be required for mining. And this was expected to support one of the 
one of the strange things that have come out of the convention which says that an economic deposit should support a mining operation for 20 years and produce 3 million metric dry tons of nodules each year. This workshop was designed to bring together international deep sea microfauna experts with representatives of ISA contractors for their exploration for polymetallic nodules in the area to facilitate the establishment of a standardized taxonomy for the baseline studies of microfauna associated with these resources. This is expected to be achieved through the creation of a standardized nomenclature with associated descriptions and keys to be made available on the web for the use by contractors. Secondly, the recommendation of a standardized taxonomic identification including sampling and storing methods for contractors. Thirdly, the creation of a database of the locations where different species have been observed, including biogeographic variables, as it was started for the megafauna workshop, which I indicated was um, started and completed last year. Fourthly, the provision of guidelines and procedures to be utilized by contractors, prospectors, and the marine scientific researching community in applying the standardized nomenclature. Fifth, the collection of representative images of each um, identified species. Sixth, the creation of an atlas of the locations where different species have been observed. And seven, a program of work to address the gaps in knowledge or understanding. The expected outcomes of the workshop Upon completion of the third workshop, this is the second, the third workshop will be on myofauna. It is expected that the recommended standardized taxonomies for the megafauna, macrofauna, and myofauna, as well as the guidelines and procedures to be utilized by contractors, prospectors, and marine scientific researching organizations on the fauna associated with deep seabed polymetallic nodules in the area. It is expected that all of these will be considered by the authorities' legal and technical commission with a view to making its own decision, recommendations to the Council on taxonomies to use for such fauna. We ask all contractor representatives to bring 